Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we're talking about Dubia Roach Care. This is probably going to be a very, very short video, but it was asked for, so here we are. I've done a couple of videos kind of like this about gut loading, which is kind of part of their care, but this video is just going to be strictly about Dubia Roaches, strictly about their care. The other videos always included other feeder insects as well. This is just Dubia Roaches. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. All right, first things first. Quickly, let's just go over Dubia Roaches um, and why, <laughs> because I feel like a lot of people hear Dubia Roaches and they're like, why do I want roaches in my house to feed my animals? Dubia Roaches, super nutritious. They are not like normal roaches, not like house roaches that people can get sometimes. They cannot climb smooth surfaces, so you don't really have to worry about them escaping the container that they're in. They are very nutritious for your animals. They're very filling. They're a lot less likely to carry parasites and things like crickets. They don't chirp. They don't make all that noise and stuff. They're honestly just a really nice feeder for reptiles. So caring for these because you can't just buy a bunch of doobie roaches and throw them in an empty container and just expect them to still be nutritious. We need to care for them. We need to feed them. We need to make sure that they are clean and healthy for our animals. So how do you do that? First thing is the setup for them. Probably the easiest way to set up doobie roaches habitat are going to be just a big plastic sterilite bin. Take the big bin, you're going to put some sort of holes in it for breathing um, and also for like circulation. If there's not enough circulation in there, it gets does start to smell bad and we don't want that, especially because you're going to be feeding them vegetables, which will rot. Ventilation. So sterilite bin, it can be as big or small as you need it. If you're only keeping like 30 doobie roaches at a time, you can get a little sterilite bin. If you're going to keep 130 doobie roaches at a time, you probably need a bigger one. And we're going to drill holes into the top or if you do not have something to drill holes you can use a box cutter exacto knife and just cut a big rectangle in the top some sort of large space in the top just be safe make sure you're being safe then you're going to get some cheap screen from walmart like window screening hot glue it in place you can super glue it maybe i always use hot glue every time i build these put it over the top and you're good your habitat has been built alternatively you could get like a five or ten gallon glass tank and put a screen lid on top that's also an option i just prefer the tubs because they're a lot cheaper and they're kind of like hazy or foggy i guess frosted so it kind of makes them feel a little more secure but if you have a glass tank laying around and you have a screen lid then use that because they will be happy with that too the next thing you need in that bin is hiding spaces for them this can be pretty much anything most of the time i use egg cartons you can go down to like farm supply stores and usually get a lot of these for very cheap my local farm supply store last time i went i think i got them for maybe five or ten cent each for egg cartons rip them up throw them in there you also can just order them online if you can't find a farm supply store or if your farm supply store does not have them when i say farm supply store i mean like feed stores tractor supply any store that sells farming things you also can just save like paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls and throw a whole bunch of those in there because that is also going to provide them cardboard for them to hide in all we're doing is providing them surface space where they can get away from each other and they can also hide whatever you feel and then these guys are going to need some source of food and water there's so many different ways that you can do this you can feed them scraps. If you are also feeding a bearded dragon, when you feed your bearded dragon their greens, you can just take the stems from those greens and feed it to the roaches because that's going to provide them a water source and nutrient food source. Any sort of vegetable scraps, you can also feed them things like calcium, like the powder stuff that you can buy in big jars. You can feed them that. They will eat just about anything you put in there. I like to find the pelleted bearded dragon food when it is on sale and feed that to the doobie roaches. I've been yelled at for <laughs> suggesting that you can feed those things because quote, why would you spend money on that when you can feed them vegetables? I'm just listing options. I also suggest having some sort of something to hold that food in so you're not just slopping it in there because anything that's uneaten will need to be cleaned out. So any kind of plastic container or any kind of old mealworm containers, like the little plastic things that those come in, I like to cut those out and put those in and use those as food containers. You can really use anything you want. Little glass dishes would be very easy to clean. One big thing, it used to be suggested that you could feed dog food to doobie roaches. Research has been done on that and dog food seems like it may be too high in protein to give to the doobie your roaches because then it becomes an issue for the bearded dragons and can lead to things like 
fatty liver disease and gout and things like that. So probably avoid pelleted dog foods for the roaches. And as far as water, water crystals are usually the way to go with dubia roaches. Giving them a big water source can potentially drown them. Their drowning risk is not as big as it is for something like crickets, but I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. You have purchased these dubia roaches most likely, so you don't want them to die off before you feed it to your animal. Water crystals are very inexpensive. I get mine from Amazon and I take a gallon water jug, like distilled water from the store the water crystal thing that I get is for two gallons. I dump half of that in there and it makes it and then I just pour it out. That was a suggestion from my cousin. So thank you so much because I still do that. For a long time, what I did was just took a big plastic container and stuffed it full of paper towels and then put water in it that way. If you do it that way, you have to make sure that you clean that out a lot because paper towels can harbor bacteria. So that is something that you'd have to clean out quite, quite a lot because they are going to be crawling all over it and getting all in it and it, it can cause a bacterial issue that isn't in expensive way to do it, but also a more time consuming way. But that's basically it. That is how you take care of dubia roaches. You essentially just gut load them. You feed them, you water them, make sure that they're healthy for your animal. And if you want to breed them, usually all you have to do is stick a heat pad on the side. I have never purposely bred dubia roaches. Mine have always bred by accident on them by themselves. In the summertime in the past, the room that the dubia roaches were in got a little toasty. It was right beside an outside door. And so it'd get warm and they would breed. So if you do put them in a warmer part of your house, they will probably breed automatically. As long as they have food, water, and heat, they should breed. As far as when they will breed, when they are fully grown, that is when they breed. So the differences between male and female, the females are all dark and shiny like this one. And the males have wings like this one. The males honestly kind of creep me out, but it's fine. <laughs> Once you see that you have adult males and females, again, if they have food, water, and heat, they'll probably start to breed. You'll probably start to see tiny little baby dubia roaches in your enclosure. So that's cool. I guess we can add the microphone died at this point in this video, so I didn't get to do the outro. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you are trying to breed dubia roaches or just keep a colony of dubia roaches, hopefully this video helped you out. The microphone of course died during the ad read, didn't realize, but huge thank you to this week's sponsor, I Heart Geckos. I Heart Geckos has been a sponsor on this channel for quite a long time because I absolutely love their products. They make these really cool conversion kits along with tanks sometimes and feeding ledges and a bunch of other cool stuff, but these conversion kits basically allow you to turn any glass tank that you may have into a front opening tank which reptiles very much appreciate. They're also very well ventilated as seen there. They're just all around excellent and inexpensive products. If you happen to order anything from iHeartGeckos.com make sure to leave Els Reptiles in the how did you hear about us box that way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you're not already, please feel free to follow me on my socials, like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put in a video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout-out is here. This week's subscribe shout-out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing, and commenting, and sharing, and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Um. Yeah. Um. As listing things I need footage of. Um, um, but is that it? I think that's it.